put it. Okay. Good morning and welcome everybody to the course BC 308 Revelation in Daniel. We are uh, right now in um, the book of Revelation chapter 18 is where we're going to start off today and uh, we'll see how far we can go today starting with chapter 18 revelation uh, let's pray and then we will get started uh, may i request somebody to pray with us today and we will get started please kiran can you pray yes sir Father, we come before your throne once again and we want to say thanking you, Father God, for all things. Thanking you, Father God, for your goodness and your faithfulness and your mercy and grace. Thanking you, Father God. Submitting to your hand, Father God, every student gives you wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Father God, that we can understand the subject, Father God, reveal more things to your kingdom work, Father God. Thanking you. Rest of the time submitting to your hand. Take care of every side. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So we have been journeying through the book of Revelation as um, we see the unfolding of God's plan of what, what the Lord Jesus revealed to the Apostle John. So um, Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3 were things that were concerning what John saw and the things that were, that means that were there during John's time, the first three chapters. Chapters 4 and 5 described to us a scene in heaven, uh, beginning with what the Lord said things that are going to come. So four and five are in the future. Um, John sees what's happening in heaven. Chapter six, we see what's beginning to happen here on earth. Um, so we are journeying from chapter six. We went through all the way to chapter 17 in the book of Revelation. We, see, we saw the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls uh, have been poured out. And uh, during along that journey, we have seen uh, the midpoint of the tribulation, which is Revelation chapter 11, where that there are these two witnesses. Revelation 12, Satan comes with great vengeance. He knows his time is short. Revelation 13, the Antichrist and the false prophet, what they do, how they try to control uh, globally. Uh, and Revelation 14 is the 144,000 Jews up in heaven, and then the other five angels making proclamations. Uh, Revelation 15 and 16 are the um, seven, the, sec the second, uh, the last war, which is the seven bowls. Uh, judge, bowls of judgment, and then Revelation 17, which we saw last week. So, so basically, what happens is when we come to Revelation 16, towards the end of the seven bowls, the sixth bowl is the preparation for the battle of Armageddon. The river Euphrates is dried up, demons are released. Now, this is Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Um, Demons are released to go and, in, and instigate or mobilize the kings of the earth to come to gather together for the battle of Armageddon. That's the sixth bowl or judgment. And uh, then, so basically the, the battle of Armageddon has, you know, mobilization for that has already started. So we're really close to the end of the seven year tribulation. And then... Revelation 17 and 18 are telling us two major calamities that happened before the battle of Armageddon. Revelation 17, we saw last week this, this, this religion, this great harlot, this mystery Babylon, 
uh, collapses. Uh, she is destroyed. Um, basically, what happens is in Revelation 17, we saw that these uh, these uh, uh, these ten leaders who had supported the Antichrist and the false prophet who was supported by the Antichrist, these ten leaders they withdraw their support and they turn against this great harlot, which is this one world religion, or that's been put in place. And so that whole thing collapses. So we covered till that, that is till the end of Revelation 17. We are starting today with Revelation chapter 18. So Revelation 18, once again, I'll just give a quick overview and then we will read it. Revelation 18 tell, talks about the great city Babylon. It's not talking about mystery Babylon, but the great city Babylon. The name is similar, Babylon. Babylon referring to anything that would go against God or try to replace God. Uh, the great, uh, the mystery of the great harlot, Babylon, the mystery Babylon, Revelation 17, was talking about the religious system. The great city, Babylon, which we will read about in Revelation 18, is talking about the financial system, the economic system. You see, so uh, the Antichrist had, brought in this economic system. Nobody can buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast on their hand or on the forehead. Only then they can buy and sell. Only then they can, you know, be part of the economic system. And so Lord of the peoples of the earth, they became part of that financial system. But what we read in Revelation 18 is that everything collapses within one hour. Within one hour, the whole financial system collapses. People lose all their wealth. People lose their money. Everything they have put in just disappears. So that's what we're going to read. And let's uh, read it portion by portion. Let's go um, uh, Revelation chapter 18. And we'll read verses 1 through 8 to start off. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, please. Somebody could read that for us. After this, I saw another angel coming down out of heaven. He had great authority and his splendor cried in it the whole earth. He cried out in a loud voice, She has fallen, great Babylon has fallen. She is now hunted by demons and unclean spirit, spirits. All kind of filthy and hateful birds live in her, for all the nations have drunk her wine, the strong wine of her immoral lust, the kings of the earth practice sexual immorality with her, and the, and the merchants of the world grew rich from her un, unrestrained lust. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out, my people, come out from her. You must not take part. <clears throat> excuse me, in her sins, and since you must not share in her uh, punishment, for her sin are uh, are built up as high as heaven, and God remember her wicked way. Treat her exactly as she has treated you. Bear her back double for all she has done. Fill her cup with a trunk, a drink twice as strong as the drink as the drink she prepared for you. Give her as much suffering and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. For she keeps telling herself, I sit a queen, I am no widow, I will never known grief. Because of this in one day she will be uh, she will be struck with black diseases, grief, and famine, and she will be burned with fire because the Lord God who judged her is mighty. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, Revelation 18, so this angel is coming and he's announcing, uh, Revelation 18 verse 2, Babylon the Great is fallen. Uh, and it has um, become a place where all these unclean spirits are inhabiting. 
so um, you see uh, uh, the, the, the declaration, the fall of this great Babylon. Now we'll see what is this Babylon? What is this? Heat? What is he announcing? Um, what I want to point out is that whatever this Babylon is, it's become a place where demonic powers are operating. So really, when we see, we will see that this Babylon is a place of, we, like we said, it's the financial system, the global economic system. The reason we can see it is in verse 3, he talks about the merchants of the earth. Merchants of the earth, meaning the people who do business, uh, the people who buy and sell, the people who you know transact. So he's talking about an economic system. A financial system. But this financial system has become so corrupt that instead of God being a part of it, um, it's the demons that are that have just, you know, um, in this system. And uh, just a side note, you know, look, it's, it talks about, uh, verse 2 talks about every unclean and hated bird. Every unclean and hated bird. So um, uh, when we see you know the uh, the the prophetic image birds birds could be used for example the dove is a symbol of the holy spirit the eagle is often used as a believer and you know, they shall mount up with wings like eagles so birds are prophetic images in some some ways they used to represent you know good things but birds are also used to represent bad things. And here it talks about every unclean and hated bird. So you can imagine, you know, uh, uh, so, uh, some birds that, that, are, that are unclean, that are not clean. Those are prophetic images of evil spirits, demonic powers. Whereas dove or and the eagle is used to symbolize good things. Right. Just, just for you to know, and to keep a side note as on how prophetic, prophetic images in the Bible. Coming back to what Revelation 18 is talking about, he's talking to us about uh, this this economic system. Verse three says, you know, the nations, our kings, meaning people of power and influence, have all participated uh, in this uh, in this system. And of course, you know, notice the language he's talking using. Uh, a language like immorality, uncleanness. Why is that? That's telling us that uh, participating uh, or engaging in this kind of thing is really, not only is it a natural thing, the sense of, yeah, they're buying and selling, but there's also this departure from God. You're enga they're engaging in something that's not from God. And that's why this language here is very strong. And then he tells us, you know, that uh, God has remembered the sins. I mean, he has seen, seen the wickedness. Now, you will see in verse, verse 7, it says, In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, she says, I sit as a queen and am... Uh, uh, no widow and will not see sorrow. That means it's talking about the the pride, the you know the 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 wrong attitude, the pride of life being expressed here. You know the, the, this this whole system is uh, personified as a queen who is so proud of her achievements, proud of her luxuries, proud of her wealth. Right, so this this system is personified like that, and uh, she sits as a queen and, and 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 boasting all these things. But verse eight, in one day, all of this will be burned with fire, for God is going to judge this whole great city of Babylon. Right, so as we read further, it becomes very clear that this great city of Babylon is. Uh, an economic system. Let's read verses 9 through 16, please. If uh, somebody could read that, verses 9 through 16, and you observe very carefully 
uh, the way it's described, you will realize that, yeah, this is an economic system or a financial system. Revelation 18, 9 through 16, please. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and level lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her. When they see the smoke of her burning, standing at the distance for fear of her torment, saying, Allah, uh, Allah, Allah, uh, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore merchandise for gold and silver precious stones and pearl, pearls fine linen and purple silk and scarlet scarlet every kind of citron wood every kind of object of evil ivory ivory every kind of uh, subject Every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, cinnamon, and in incense, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine, and oil, fine flour, and wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, and char, uh, charlets and bodies and souls of men the fruit has the fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you and all the things which are rich and splitting have gone from you and you shall find them no more at all the merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her Torment, weeping, and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine lint, purple, and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Yeah. So, thank you. Revelation 18, 9 to uh, 16. So here we're getting a description of what this great city or what this queen, uh, this, um, this, you know, this, this, which was personified as a queen, um, uh, what this is. So he's very clearly mentioning here, you know, uh, he says, that, you know, the kings or the, the leaders of the earth, they all were participating in this and they were enjoying the luxury of it. But yet they will go, they will see all of this just go up in smoke. It's all just going to be burnt. It's going to be destroyed. And uh, uh, the great city, verse 10, the great city Babylon, in one hour, in one hour, it's going to be destroyed. Right? So this great city Babylon. So this whole economic system is represented or is... Um, described by this a great city or by this by personified as a queen living in luxury but what exactly is it when you read verses 11 through uh, 11 through 15 you find that he's talking really about uh, merchandise and people buying and selling all kinds of things gold and silver precious stones purples clothing and um, precious metals and um, spices and food uh, and even, you know, livestock, cattle, and even, he says, bodies and souls of men. That's verse 13. That even people are bought and sold in this. You know, so uh, this is like a system, a big system, where all these transactions are taking place. Basically, it's a, you know, so we would say in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in our, in our, Modern language, you would say this was um, uh, an economic system, a financial system, where things are bought and sold, and uh, people are, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, engaging in this, and 
uh, all of this is going to be judged in one hour. It's going to collapse. So let's see what happens as we read, read on in this chapter. Verses 17 to 24, please. Somebody could read it. So we understand very clearly from these verses, verses 11, 12, 13, 14, it's really talking about a system that is buying and selling, an you know, economic system. And of course, he's using the language of his day. You know, he's talking all about, you know, clothing and precious stones and all of those kinds of things. But it's describing to us an economic system. Verses 17 to 24, we will see what more uh, will happen to this great city, Babylon. Could somebody read that, please? Verses 17 to 24. Okay, Thomas, Revelation 18, 17 to 24, please. So, Pastor, I'll read 8, 24, 21 to 24, right, Pastor? Uh, 17 to 24, please. Okay. Um, for in one heart, one heart, such a great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailor, and as many as the trade on the sea stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of the herd burning, saying, What is this like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by their wealth, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her. O heaven, and you and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took a, a stone like a great milestone and threw it to, into the sea, saying, Thus with the violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harp, harpists, musicians, flutarists, and Trump trumpeters shall not be heard in you in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of the milestone shall not be heard in, in you anymore. The light of the lamp shall not shine you in anymore. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints and all who were slain on the earth. Hmm. So thank, thank you. So verses 17 to 24, once again, is giving us more indication on what is this great city Babylon. You know, what is he talking about? In verse 17, it says, In one hour such great riches came to nothing. So basically, this everything collapsed in one hour. And what is he talking about? Such great riches. He talks about sailors and others, merchants on ships, who were trading on the, you know, from from across distances. Um, so uh, he, he says in verse nineteen, they, these people had ships on the sea, and they became rich by her wealth. Again, he's talking about commerce about business, those kinds of things. And he says, once again, he says, in one hour, she's made desolate. That's verse 19. And then he's, uh, he's you know, so I'll just touch on the other points here. Verse 21, he talks about this great city, Babylon. It, in verse 22, he talks about craftsmen, and uh, millstone, that is the grinding stone, you know, on which flour and all is made. Um, talks about merchants in verse 23. So basically, it's very clear to us, and I'm just highlighting this, that he's talking about a commerce, a commercial system, an economic system. So this global economic system, which was brought in by the Antichrist, causing people to buy and sell only by receiving the mark of the beast, where he was controlling this, 
everything collapses and people of the earth participated in it. Kings of the earth, leaders of the earth, great people participated in it. Everything collapses. Now, now other things I just want to point out is he says in verse 20 and once again in verse 24, he talks about the blood of the apostles, the prophets and the saints being avenged. That means this system, this global economic system, impacted the people of God, resulting in their death. How would that have happened? Well, God's people, apostles and prophets and saints, refused to partake of this, this system because they refused the mark of the beast. They refused to receive the mark on their hands or the foreheads. They didn't say, we're not going to participate in this thing. right? And so they were, they were killed. The apostles, the prophets, the saints were killed. And so here, God is avenging their death by the collapse of this economic system. The other thing we see here is he says, you know what, this great city, when you collapse, there'll be no more music heard in you, or no more celebration, nothing, meaning it's going to be desolate, it's going to be barren. Um, this collapse is going to be so, you know, it's just, it's the, the finality of it, it's, it's over. The global economic system where all the leaders of the earth and, and influential people, they all participated in it. It says in one hour, all their riches are gone. It came to nothing. Right? So Revelation chapter 17 is mystery Babylon or the great harlot. Revelation 18 is the great city Babylon or the queen or the luxurious queen. They're just both, uh, just, you know, pictures of, one is a religious system, one is an economic system. Both these things collapse during the time of the build-up to the battle of Armageddon. And uh, it's very interesting, you know, what we are seeing happen in the world today. Uh, you know, uh, you know what, what's happening in the world today with, you know, Russia, Ukraine, the battle, and how how Russia, you know, had invade, has invaded Ukraine and all of that, and then how all the many nations, many other nations, have responded. The European, North American nations, and so on, they've responded, and and I have mentioned this before, and we have we've seen that in it, within you know a day or a few days, economic, the economy of the Russian nation was impacted so greatly, you know. So in this in this whole war, there's been an economic impact. And of course, other other nations are also feeling uh, the results of uh, a lot of sanctions and so on. But you can, you can kind of get a sense how in this great buildup of the Battle of Armageddon, the nations are going to be mobilized towards Israel. As that is happening, as they're all moving in, two things collapse. The religious system collapses, the economic system collapses. So now we come to Revelation chapter 19. In Revelation chapter 19, we get a glimpse of what is happening in heaven, while on earth there is a preparation for the battle of Armageddon happening. So on earth, Revelation 16, 13 through 14, the nations are being mobilized to, towards the battle of Armageddon. The global economic system collapses. The global religious system collapses. That's happening here on earth. Revelation 19. What's happening in heaven around the same time? Right? So that's what we're going to see. Everybody's with me so far? Any questions? Okay, everything's clear. Okay, I see you got comments. So what's happening in heaven during this time? Revelation chapter 19. Let's please read verses 1 to 10. Revelation 19, 1 to 10. Somebody could read it for us, please. Prince. After these things, I heard a loud voice of great multitude in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord, our God. For true and righteous are his judgment, because he has, ju he has judged the great harlot, 
who corrupted the earth with her fornication and he has avenged on her the blood of his servant said by her again the again they said hallelujah hallelujah her smoke rise up forever and ever and the 24 elders and the four living creatures fall down and worship god who sat on the throne saying amen hallelujah then a voice came from the throne saying praise our god all you his servants and those who fear him both small and great and i heard as it were it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty things saying hallelujah for the lord god omnipotent reason let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arranged in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints then he said and then he said to me right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me these are the true saying of god and i for at his feet to worship him but he said to me see that you do not do that i am your flow servant and of your brother in who have the testimony of jesus worship god for the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy amen mm. man thank you so revelation 19 verses 1 through 10 so john is lost having this vision of heaven and what's happening first there is a great celebration in heaven at the collapse of what's of babylon here on earth so this great harlot babylon that's the religious system has collapsed the great city babylon has collapsed the ba- babylon itself any this this whole this this whole system or systems that um, man, man had put their trust in uh, which took the place of god which resulted in the in the destruction of the lives of many of the saints and the apostles and the prophets of god has collapsed and so in heaven there's that shout of triumph hallelujah praise our god this is you know god has avenged uh, his people and then well there's the sound of uh, worship and praise uh, john hears this he says you know here is the announcement being made the marriage of the lamb has come so what is happening in heaven towards the end of the seven years of tribulation the final thing happening in heaven is the marriage of the lamb remember we are in on as far as the earth's calendar is concerned we are in the seven years of tribulation right as far as the earth time is concerned and we have come to the end of the seven years of tribulation at that time what we are seeing happening in heaven is the marriage of the lamb and so there's this announcement being made you know verse 7 uh rejoice be glad give glory to god why the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready now when it says his wife we keep in mind that uh god's people the the, the body of christ is also referred to with you know referred to uh with um, with this feminine uh term the bride of christ or the uh, you know uh, 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 the, the saints the people of god are pictured that way right as the bride of christ so um this you know based on ephesians 5 we see that that christ gave himself for her the church so the church meaning that the people of god so here uh, revelation 19 verse 7 the and talks about the bride of the lamb it's basically the saints of god god's people all the old and the new testament saints all of them together who are now in heaven they have made themselves ready and uh, they are clothed 
and fine linen in, a, in righteousness. They clothed in fine righteousness. And verse 9, the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. And uh, so, you know, uh, let, let me say this. We know Jesus said this when he sat with his disciples at the Last Supper. He sat with them and he said, you know, uh, as he ate with the bread and, and the wine and, you know, and he, and he instituted the Lord's Supper. He said, I will not drink it with you until I drink it with you in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom, in the presence of the Father. You know, so this is it. We, we are saying that he was referencing or refer, referring to the uh, marriage supper where it, the, the, the bride is going to meet the bridegroom. Now, you know, we just have to imagine. We, we don't know all the details. But generally what you would see is, okay, there's a big table. People are sitting and eating. You know, you, you think about a marriage supper like that. But it's really talking about a time of celebration, a time of great union, uh, a time of rejoicing, meaning this is something God has been working towards. He's been getting the people ready. And this is that climax. This is the coming together of everything God has been working towards. So the marriage supper of the Lamb. So on earth, there's getting ready for the battle of Armageddon. On earth, in heaven, sorry, there is this great celebration of God saying, look, this is something I've been preparing the saints for, God's people for, and this is that celebration. Once this marriage supper of the Lamb has taken place in heaven, what happens next? We see the Lord coming forth out of heaven to the earth. So we see Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. Can somebody read that for us? Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Conan, if your mic is okay, you can read it. Dave, I'm not sure about your mic, so I don't want to trouble you. But um, uh, Conan, if your mic is fine, read it. Please read it. Revelation 19, 11 to 16. Okay, I will read. 11 to 16, right? Mm -hmm. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a, a white horse, and uh, he who sat on him, was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes wars. His eyes were like flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his uh, name is called the Word of God. And the uh, Armies in heaven, clothed in the in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that uh, with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. Uh, he himself uh, treads the wine press of the friends and wrath yes. of almighty god uh, and he has on his robe and uh, his big a name written uh, king of kings and lord of lords mm. thank you so revelation 19 11 through 16 so john sees the heaven opened and he sees Jesus coming. So this is the Lord Jesus returning or coming to the earth in this, this magnificent glory. Right Now, Daniel spoke about this. He said, I, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, 14. 
Daniel said, I saw the Son of Man coming in the clouds of glory. Many times on his earthly ministry, Jesus said, you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds in his glory. And here it is, Revelation 19.11, being fulfilled. He comes, and, and, and John is describing, he comes with, you know, like this mighty warrior riding on a white horse. Uh, his eyes are like flame of fire, and his head has many crowns, meaning he is king of kings. He's, 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 uh, this symbolizes a great authority and dominion. And he's the one, you know, who was crucified. He has his robe dipped in blood, and he's called the word of God, and then he's saying the armies of heaven. So the armies of heaven would include the angelic host and the saints. You know, in Jude chapter 1, uh, verses 14 and 15, uh, Jude records, you know, how the Enoch said, I saw the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints. Jude chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. So that's being fulfilled right here. When the Lord comes with, with the armies of heaven, that means the saints of God and the angelic host, we are coming with him. And what happens? He judges the nations. He strikes the nations. So here on earth, the nations have gathered together against Jerusalem, against Israel, against Jerusalem. They're coming against them. Now, there may be those who are supporting or for Israel, and there are those who are against Israel. Uh, and like we saw from Ezekiel um, 38 and 39, you know, it gives us a list of some of the nations, uh, and how they're aligned, and they're coming together against Israel and the Lord himself comes and he judges the nations because he is king of kings and lord of lords so um, the Bible talks about you know gives details in other places like uh, in Zechariah chapter 14 it talks about how this battle is going to unfold um, and uh, I think also in yeah, Zechariah chapter 14, he talks about you know, that his feet will come on the Mount of Olives, Zechariah 14, 4. The mountain will be split into two. Uh, and then verse, verse 12, the Lord will just strike the people of the earth. Uh, and, you know, they, um, uh, Zechariah 14, they, they will be just dis destroyed. Right? So God himself comes and he fights for Jerusalem, for Israel, and he destroys these nations who have gathered against Israel, against Jerusalem. So that's this passage here, Revelation 19, 11 to 16. And he is going to take care of, or he's going to judge the, the Antichrist, the false prophet. And that's, that will happen at this time, the end of the battle of Armageddon. So let's read that those last few verses, Revelation 19, verses 17 to 21, just to see the you know what what happens in the battle of Armageddon. Revelation chapter 19, 17 to 21, please. Somebody could read that for us. Yeah. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the place of kings, the place of captains, the place of mighty men, the place of horses, and uh, and of those who sit on them, and the place of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the waste, the kings of the earth, and their enemies gathered together to make war against him, against him who sat on the horse, and against his army. That the beast was captured, and with him, the false prophet who works signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received and the mark of the paste and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brainstorm, and the, and the 
rest were killed with the sword which processed uh, proceed from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with the plus mm. okay so this 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 passage here is just describing to us this battle of Armageddon here on earth just by the word of his mouth the lord is going to you know destroy all those who had come against israel and um, the kings the armies of the earth all those who have gathered against israel they're going to be destroyed and it says the beast and the false prophet so the antichrist and the false prophet are going to, um, and those you know the, uh, those who worship them they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. So they're, they're sent away into the lake of fire. And the rest were killed, the others. So that means the others, the armies, the earth, the people who, who came against Israel, Jerusalem, they were killed. And the birds of the air came to eat up their flesh. Meaning you can imagine hundreds of thousands of people killed. We saw earlier in uh, Revelation 14, where, uh, when, when the angel had announced in Revelation 14, that uh, Revelation 14, 20, that blood will flow up to the horse's bridle for about you know, 180 or 200 miles. And this is that destruction, the, the, the devastation. People are killed. Blood is going to flow like that, like a river outside of Jerusalem. So, or outside, not too far from the city of Jerusalem. So this, you know, this the Lord Himself will defend Jerusalem and His, and his, and his people, Israel. And this is the kind of destruction that's going to take place. The the Antichrist and the false prophet are removed. They are put into the lake of fire. So this brings us to the end of the seven years of tribulation. It ends with a battle of Armageddon and Christ has come to set up his kingdom here on earth. Now, when we read Daniel chapter 12, the end of Daniel, Daniel mentioned, you know, he, he gives this gap period of about 45 days or so when the, 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 the we talk, refer to it as a fourth temple, Ezekiel chapter 40 onwards, 42, 48, I think, you know, before the, the, the worship of the temple can be restored and so on, the temple cleansed and so on. So it seems to us at this period of time, this gap period of about 45 days or so, is a time that is used, probably used to just clean up all the devastation, destruction that comes at the end of the battle of Armageddon. But Christ has come to set up his physical kingdom on the earth. And he is going to rule physically, literally out of Jerusalem, as had been spoken through the prophets. Okay, So we'll take a break and we'll come back. We'll continue with chapter 20 to see what follows, what happens after the battle of Armageddon. You know, so Revelation chapter 20, we'll start that after the break. Okay, so let's take a quick 10-minute break, and uh, we'll see you again. Thank you.